Just hey everyone. Good. It's your friendly neighborhood reviewer here. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And yeah, Spider-Man has been my favorite character in the comic books. So today I'm gonna to review all Spider-Man films. Again, sp just Spider-Man films. So Captain America Civil War is not included. Venom and Morbius will not be included either. It's Morbin time. And no Japanese Spider-Man either, which is very tragic because I really like Japanese Spider-Man. At number 10, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Honestly, this movie was quite a mess. A lot of the plot points does not make sense to me. Uh, the opening shot where he's trying to take down these thieves, he was just joking around instead of taking the thieves down immediately. The right, I think the writers were like, you know what? Let's make it, let's just write some jokes down that Spider-Man will say instead of just taking down a thief so that, you know, the audience will like it more. Which did not go so well for me. Then he broke up with Gwen to keep her safe, which I understand why he did that. And later in the movie, he got back to her, which, why? Of course, and then in the end of the movie, she dies because why do you get back to her? I thought you wanted to keep her safe. And also, let's not forget, the Green Goblin was just thrown into the mix at the end. Which was very unnecessary because the Green Goblin in this film was very underdeveloped so potential there is gone and it was just very unnecessary. Then there is Electro who is the main antagonist or the main villain in this story and there is nothing that makes him a compelling villain. He's not even, let's just say he's, I don't find him very intimidating at all with his actions and his motivations are really too far-fetched. He was in a poor work condition, so if he wants to get back to his company and try and destroy his company, I would understand, but why do you want to destroy the entire city? It's just too far-fetched, the motivation of the villain. Honestly, this is the whole Spider-Man film that I've seen so far, and the other Spider-Man films in this list are much better. Now coming to number 9, okay, this is going to be very controversial. I'm going to say Spider-Man Far From Home for me. Look, I understand many of you consider this film to be one of the greatest Spider-Man films but it just didn't work for me. Mainly because there's, it feel like a slice of life which didn't work for me at all. Um, look, I'm a fan of slice of life anime but this here doesn't work at all because I like it when Spider-Man is put through the ringer. Uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, he was really put through the ringer and in this film he's just going on a holiday. And the uh, villain Mysterio is somebody who hates Iron Man, which is super original by the way. I've never seen something so creative like that. Even the previous Spider-Man film, very original. There were so many things in this film which felt very unnecessary. Some of Spider-Man's struggles in this film came from teenage problems like, you know, having this love rivalry between this other guy who loves MJ also and, and there was this night monkey thing which also was very unnecessary basically there's a lot of teenager problems going on here which really didn't suit me at all and i felt like the slice of life was unnecessary like i like slice of life anime and this i did not like and it lacked originality as well but it spider-man 3 another messy film with too much villains thrown into the film this causes quite a lot of confusing storylines some of the things that happened did not feel earned that much. Like Harry Osborn's change from going to be very bad and hating Peter Parker, trying to kill him, to now helping him was too easy. And then there is emo Peter Parker who has become a meme now. Which, okay, back then, uh, he wasn't really very popular. Many people did not like the way that character is portrayed. But here, in now, when there's a lot of memes going on, he's very popular and everybody loves him. So I can't say much about him. There was a love problem storyline as well and basically this film had too much, it had good ideas but it had too much of it so it felt very messy and convoluted so overall this film was really just another mess it was, but it was quite enjoyable anyways. Then number 7, The Amazing Spider-Man, the first film of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Good film but it follows the pattern of the first film too much. Okay, stop copying me. Stop, stop copying me! How he came to be his own origin story, just that they changed the villain. And that's really lazy to me because I'm, I feel like I'm just seeing Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, but just with a different villain. And the film handled differently, but 
the story is still the same so i wish they opted for a different kind of story for an origin story and the least they could have done is make a villain that is more compelling but lizard i'm very sorry to say falls short as a villain green goblin is still the better villain here overall this film was quite a disappointment but still a great film at number six we have spider-man homecoming uh sorry if my voice is not that great my mic died out so i'm gonna have to talk like this now one big thing i really appreciate about this film is that uh, rather than doing what the amazing spider-man did which is to copy the same formula the same story formula that toby Maguire's original spider-man movie had but just come with a different villain this film has a different story it starts off differently it doesn't give you an origin story at all because we have seen that origin story uh, twice already peter parker is already spider-man and i really appreciate it for that one reason but uh, I do have one small issue and one big issue with this. My small issue concerns the character of Spider-Man here. I felt like the comedy was a bit too much here. Like, don't get me wrong, I like comedy. I really like the comedy in this film. I thought it was really effective, but I wish they toned down the comedy a bit more because one thing that I really liked about Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is that we took his character very seriously because he was put through the ringer. Here, there was too much comedy. And if they toned that down and put him through more struggles, I think it would have been great. Now my biggest issue, the MCU. What? The MCU is my biggest issue with this film. Don't get me wrong, I love the MCU, I love this movie. Just that as a Spider-Man film alone, this film cannot stand. It needs the MCU so that it can be great. I mean, Tony Stark helps uh, Spider-Man a lot in this film, especially with his suit and when the ship split and he has to help to bring it back in and don't get me wrong i like tony stark i like iron man but i wished he had lesser involvement in the story i mean even the main villain was created by tony stark that says a lot now this is just my opinion it is not the definitive list it is just my list so please don't hate me for this because i can see it coming already at number five i'm gonna give it to spider-man across the spider-verse <laughs> Look, I love this film. It was incredible, but there are just four other movies that I liked even more and I just can't help it. So I'm really sorry about that. The comedy in this film is great, by the way. The family issue is relatable, especially for Miles and Gwen Stacy, especially for Gwen Stacy. There were plot twists in the final moments of the film, which I really liked. It really threw me in for a ride. Yeah, this film was really incredible, but, but I had some issues with this film that cannot be helped. Alright, it's not my fault, but I just had issues. Oh, yeah! First, I wish the character or spot in this film was handled better. I wish he was taken more seriously in this film. Because he is the villain and he's going to be the villain in the next part, which is the next film, which is coming, I think, next year or something, or the late or later this year. I can't remember when they said it. But he's going to be the villain. I want him to be intimidating and not just a joke. And I didn't take him seriously until halfway into the movie and i wish they we took him seriously from the beginning as a threat by making him more serious it would have kept the tension in from the beginning and i would have preferred that but then again they poked a lot of jokes at him and i just can't help that but my biggest issue with this film is the cliffhanger what did you say yes the cliffhanger is the biggest issue for me i watched this film on the opening weekend so I didn't know this was going to be the first part of a two-part movie. So I had no idea there was going to be a cliffhanger. And because of the cliffhanger, I felt like the story was very incomplete. You got a problem with that? So I wish that even though there was a cliffhanger, I wish they could have at least made the story feel a bit of, have a bit of completion to it. At number four, Spider-Man No Way Home. This was just fan service for all Spider-Man fans out there. And I absolutely loved that. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! And this was also the first movie where I took Storm Holland's Spider-Man seriously. Like, in this film, he was put through the ringer, which is what fans have been asking from the first two films. But in this film, they finally gave it to us. Finally. <laughs> thank you so much, Marvel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And we have Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man to come in and help him deal with his struggle. So they flow into the story very well. They weren't just put in just for fan service. 
they actually have a part, an important and crucial part to play in the story in Tom Holland's Spider-Man's character arc in this film. And I really, really love that. Props to the screenwriters of this film. They knew what they were doing. And the villains, they felt like the perfect villains for Tom Holland, which is very weird because they were villains for Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, but here they fit perfectly for Tom Holland as well. So props to the screenwriters again and the story writers. They did a fantastic job here. My only problem was getting to the fan service part. You go to Doctor Strange and you want to erase everyone's memory of you just because you want your friends and yourself to get into university. I mean, that's a bit too far-fetched. I wish there was a better reason or a better way to go about it. Other than that, I didn't have much of a issue with this film. When I saw all three Spider-Man together, I had the biggest grin on my face and I absolutely love the experience in the theatre. Incredible. At number three, we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, this film was a big surprise to me how good it was. I didn't know how what to expect of this film when I first heard about it. I thought it was going to be good. I didn't know how good it was judging by the trailer. So I went to watch the film and I was surprised. Yes! From start to finish, I was enthralled in this movie. It was incredible. The Okay, it's an origin story, but it feels different from the previous origin stories we have seen because it doesn't follow beat by beat the same story structure as the previous origin stories that Spider-Man has that we have seen in the live action films. So it feels more unique to Miles, which I really appreciate because they gave something, a story that's unique to Miles and not just taking Peter Parker's story and giving it to Miles. They gave him his own story and I really appreciate that. And even though they gave him a different story, they kept the essence of what makes Spider-Man really great and that is taking a leap of faith so and that's just really incredible they knew what they were doing with this film and we also witnessed miles spider-man coming into his own in this film really amazing i just wished kingpin could have been a more of a villain for miles morales because he felt more of a villain for peter parker spider-man he didn't feel more of a villain for miles morales so i wish there was a deeper connection between kingpin and miles morales yeah, other than that, I don't have much. It's a fantastic film. Number two, the original Spider-Man. Yes, this is the film that set the standard for superhero origin films. Still my favorite superhero origin film like ever is incredible. And unlike many other Spider-Man films or Marvel films nowadays in the MCU, they don't poke fun at the, our characters or they are not full of comedy. This film allows us to take Spider-Man as a serious character as he's pushed to the corner, pushed to the limits and put through the ringer and I really love that. It just makes the experience of this film really special. Perfect, everything, down to the last minute detail. But coming in at number one, Spider-Man 2, one of the greatest sequels ever made. Here we find Spider-Man struggling internally. If I continue as Spider-Man, I'm gonna lose what's most important to me personally for Peter Parker. I'm gonna lose my girlfriend, my lover, I'm gonna lose my best friend. But if I don't continue as Spider-Man, the people in the city will fear crime because the city needs a Spider-Man. So he's in this internal struggle whether he should go have his normal life or whether he should continue as Spider-Man for the sake of the city. So it's about his own personal gain versus that of what the city needs. And I really like the internal struggle he has. Eventually he loses his power because he's struggling as Spider-Man but once he's clear of his mind like what that he wants to get back as Spider-Man because the city needs him he suddenly gets back his power and that's just really incredible writing really great character writing and there were certain moments in this film which felt really earned well written the part where Harry figures out Spider-Man's real identity as his best friend and the part where MJ finally realizes the man who has saved her multiple times is the man she loves. It's just such great writing. And last but not least, let's not forget one of my favorite scene in a comic book film, the train scene. It's just really incredible writing and I absolutely loved it. Let me know your ranking of Spider-Man films in the comments below. If you like this video, click the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Other than that, I have nothing else. Thanks for watching. You guys are the best. I really appreciate it. See you next time.